Welcome to Cool to Craft. I'm Tiffany Windsor. And I'm Heidi Borchers. On today's show, we're talking about paint, but using paint in unusual ways. Right. Today, I'm going to show you how to paint tissue paper, and it's fun for collage and mixed media. It's a super cool technique. Candice Jedrowitz is creating earthenware hearts. Now, you might ask, what does that have to do with paint? Well, she's using paint for antiquing. And I am going to dye ribbons with acrylic paint to create vintage look flowers. So don't go away, we'll be right back. Paint. We're talking about paint today. Paint. <laughs> it's something that we use as crafters every day. I do. When we first mention the word paint, you think of grabbing just a paintbrush and your acrylic paints and paint painting boxes, painting boxes paint. and Anything. what other traditional painting is there. Maybe on a canvas. Mm -hmm. But we have some unusual ways to use paint today. And that really wasn't the initial intent of this show. I just said, let's do a paint show, and we all came up with different ways to use paint. And mine's really a technique that you can use on so many different things. We're going to ask Heidi to demo her painting on tissue, but I see you have some examples here. Well, there's so many different colors that you can use um, in your paint. I mean, you can use all your whole palette of every color you have. I mean, I have probably, what, 100 colors of paint in my, in my studio, so all the different ones. But it's lots of fun to do all kinds of different ones. Make a whole bunch of them up, and then you can have them ready for any time that you're going to collage, mix media, do scrapbooking. You can use them for anything. Well, let's go ahead and watch you demo. Okay. Here's our box, and I have um, some feet for it. And I am just using the cap off of the glue bottles. You know, how many of these do you have? that you never use after you have an empty bottle. So save them because they make fabulous feet. So we're going to glue these on to the bottom of the box before we get started on painting our paper so these can dry. And I'm using the thick, uh, super thick tacky glue to put them on to the bottom. And we're just gonna glue them on. Remember that the glue dries clear. I love the look of these. And make sure they're evenly placed. Last one. Like so. Now I'm going to set this aside to dry and then I'm going to paint it, but while that's drying and, and I get it painted, is I'm going to show you how to paint. It's time to paint our tissue paper and this is such a great technique. You simply have wax paper and pieces of just white tissue paper and I sandwich them in between. I, I layer up a whole bunch of them so that I can do um, a bunch at a time you know, one at a time, but then I can pull it off and do the next one. Now, you are not limited to doing just tissue paper. I like tissue paper because it, it's kind of got a see-through look when it's painted. You can do the brown paper. I'm going to show you that in a minute. You can do scrapbooking paper. You can do that uh, wonderful packing paper that's kind of a bleached paper. Any paper, paper will work. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put on a dimensional paint. And I usually like the pearl, but today I'm using slick. And this is just the tulip. This is going to act as a resist. So tap it down. And I'm going to just do some swirlies here. And all this is done while the paint is wet. So you want to be kind of quick, but you know, and put enough on that it's not going to dry out. But you can't leave the room when you have this on and go to do something else before you put the other paint on. We can do like a heart here. And you can always do little like squigglies. You can do dots. And 
Next thing we're going to do is put some color. Let's put on some blue. And you just kind of just put a little bit here and there. Not a lot. And I usually use three, four colors. A little bit here and there. Let's put a purple on. Remember, it has to be wet. Now here comes the fun. Now take one of your used gift cards or one of the cards that comes in the mail and it's sturdy or used cardboard and this is going to be your squeegee. Now you're going to keep it at an angle. See how I have it at an angle? And you're going to squeegee it across. But while I'm squeegeeing it, I'm taking my cardboard or my squeegee and I'm moving it. So here we go on the first line. Isn't that the coolest? It's just like magic. I just love this. I love this technique. Now, if you have the extra paint down here, that's okay. We're going to use that for something else. Go to the next uh, line, and it kind of overlaps the other line. And the last line on this particular piece. And there's our squiggly and the rest of our heart. And you have wonderful painted tissue. Now we go to the next one and just put that somewhere to dry. Let's just do a different color. Just Let's have some fun here. How about some, well, let's get our white back again and let's just do some squigglies. And again, you can use, you can use any color for your dimensional paint. I just prefer, I prefer the white on this particular project. But you could use metallic, you could use glitter, any of it acts as a resist. In fact, I also was playing the other day with the Aline's uh, clear gel glue, and it works perfectly as a resist too. So we're going to use some red here, and you can use any kind of, these are all just acrylic paints, use any kind. And let's get a little bit of black. And how about a little bit of cream? And a little bit of gold. Again, we're going to have this at an angle. And keep it moving. And there's the magic. Keep that excess paint at the end. And the magic of paint. Paint it on tissue paper. Let me put this on the floor over here. And I wanted to, before we get to collaging, because we're going to run out of time, I wanted to do even some of the brown paper to show you really quick how that works. Like I said, you can use any paper. I found they all work. And the dimensional paint is working as a resist. And I also found you can do, sometimes you can do letters. Everybody wants to, to do their name and things like that. They don't always keep uh, the letters like you might want them. But it does work. And a little bit of black. And we'll go over, wipe off my squeegee. And this is brown paper. See, it works the same way. So for any mixed media projects or even scrapbooking, you can create your own beautiful artwork. See how it went through my name? And also another hint is don't go back through. If you go back through, you lose it. See, that next color goes color, covers it all up. So once you stroke over it, just leave it that way. You can always use bits and pieces of this. So I'm going to clean up my space and I'll be right back and show you what to do with this fabulous paper. Here's a piece of the tissue paper that I did earlier and it just peels right off the wax paper. And it's all dry. 
And then remember how we had that excess um, paint after we after we squeegeed, I had the excess paint. Well, if you take that and pull that off, it depends how thick it is. You could also use it, you could just tear this up and use this for collage. But when you have these paint pieces, you can actually uh, put them through paper punch or this, you know, like a Sizzix machine, and you can cut them into different shapes, and they work wonderful for an added dimension for some of your mixed media pieces. So that's just a little hint from Heidi. Now let's get to collaging our box. I've got it all um, painted and there's our feet that we did earlier. And we're going to collage the top first. So I'm going to put some of the, um, this is the Aline's uh, collage page. Put some of that. I'm just using the matte color today, or the matte finish today. And a brush. And what I always do is I like to put it underneath, brush it on, and I'm only going to put a piece on top. I've got a piece cut here. So I want it underneath completely and try not to get too many globs of it. Just smooth it out. Go all to the edges. Make sure that you have it completely covered. And then you're going to put it on the back of the paper. Again, going fairly quickly so that you don't let this the top dry out. And then you're going to put it onto the box. So remember we have a coat on the box, we have a coat on the back of the paper. We're going to lay it in and tap it down, make sure there's no air bubbles. If it's going over the edge and you don't want it to, you can kind of you still have time to keep it within the box top and then you're going to put a coat over the top. So it's actually three different coats that you need when you do uh, the collage page or the collaging. So there's our top. When it, when it dries it'll be completely clear and then we would go on to do the sides and what I did was I cut out a piece that would go over the, the sides. So you would put again, you put it underneath on the box you put it on the paper and then put it into it and then over it and you have your box. Now let's take a look at the finished one and bring it up here closer. Here's the box, the paper's all around the sides, there's my, uh, and I left this one for you to see just the paper but I love to to layer more and more things on it. So I even did like a little saying, as long as there are bluebirds, there will be miracles and a way to find happiness. So I just did some extra things on it. And I would love to even add more and more to it to kind of make it more mixed media. I wanted to show you what it looked like with just the paper on it. And then also I have a bird. And I took this paper, I took some of the paper that I had painted some of this and I put it through my shredder machine and that's how I did the nest and added a few little um, gold uh, tinsel and there I have my box. Isn't that cool? So much fun and look at the wonderful paint. Paint on paper. Thanks everyone! Heidi, I am so loving this project. Isn't it cool? It, I'm always satisfied with my results when I do the painted tissue paper. I'm trying to rack my brain to remember how you came up with this technique. <laughs> remember when you were working for that painting company? Okay. You had the new product? Yes. <laughs> she stuck me in a room, all this product, which was really cool, on the table and, and said, work your magic, do it. <laughs> See what you can do. She shut the door and left me there for hours. That's and this is what I came up with. That's right. And when I came back, <laughs> she had figured out a way to hang all of this tissue paper around the room to dry. Yeah, I had <laughs> tissue paper and paper all over that room. I forgot yeah. about that because it's such an amazing technique. Who would have thought that when you scrape that squeegee across that it holds that initial paint and really if you look at it every time I see it it's like magic it's like it's like it's like a kid
kid magical. <laughs> oh, look at me. It just every time I look at it, I just like, oh, that's so cool. And I swear, every time I've demo demoed it at, at meetings or anything like that, everybody goes, ooh, it is such a cool technique. You've got to try it. Here's the one hint you must, must remember that Heidi talked about in her demo. You can only swipe across once. Right. You can't go back and re-swipe that area of paint mm -hmm. or it just turns to mud. mud. One time, and once you get the technique down, you'll have no problem. Well, also, there's a little movement. If you watched my, mm -hmm. my card, there's a little movement in there that, that really works better it, instead of just going straight. It's that movement, too, that just is really cool. I don't know what it is about it. So in case you missed that, go back and watch <laughs> this a little bit later. We're going to have 121 questions about the bird. <laughs> because it matches so beautifully, first of all. This is another cool technique that I think you're going to show in a future show. I will show but it in a future show. Let's talk about this a little bit today. Well, what I want you to do is everybody look for the cloth birds that you can find. I found them in the dollar store. You can find them in your craft store. And so go start collecting these because I dip it into the cool to cast and then I covered it with the. Um, the tissue. So it's a great technique. So we'll show it on another show, but be sure you start collecting the birds because it, it's just fabulous. Look at that. Isn't that cute? You called these cloth birds. Well, Is I call them they because are? they're because they're kind of um, they're they're covered in something. Well, you know, sometimes they used to call them even like mushroom mushroom right. birds, but they're not made from mushrooms anymore. They're kind they are kind of like a fabricy Right, and you can see that in this close-up yeah. photo that we're sharing right now, that they're, and they're the, feathers. You mm -hmm. see the real feathers on here, mm -hmm. but when I dip in them. this photo, you can see when Heidi dips that it completely changes the look of this. Now, what did you do then to bring the wings back? Well, in, on this particular one, uh, it, the wings, there must have been, one of them, the wings comes out, and one of them it doesn't. So oh. this one is this one. So this is the other one. So the wings actually mm -hmm. came out on right. your finished mm -hmm. example. All right. So start with the bird, dip it and cool the cast. Heidi's going to show this in a future show. But then you've covered it with your tissue paper. Mm -hmm. Just with the same tissue paper I showed you, I covered it. Hand me the tissue, and I'll try not to crinkle it too much. But you can see how different the, the looks are depending on what colors that you use. And this one is a little bit more splattered. Uh, this one I used um, some spray dye. After? Um, after I put the circles on, yeah. And then also, remember I said in the thing to try like Aline's um, clear gel glue. Yes. This is a clear gel glue and the spray. So there's a close-up look at the clear glue. That is cool. Mm, isn't that neat? So you know, just it's a technique that I share. Try everything you have. I mean, I swear you will get addicted to this technique. And as Heidi mentioned, just make them in advance, stash them away, pull them out whenever you need mm -hmm. them. So cool. Thanks for just brainstorming about that. <laughs> and the creative inspiration is so amazing. Thank you. Next up is our friend Candace J. And Candace is using her paint today as an antiquing. Now, Candace does a lot of clay work and ceramic work like Heidi Fabulous. does. Oh. I can't even compare it to her ceramic work. So as you're watching her demonstration, I want you to keep in mind that she actually sells these hearts unfinished so that you can recreate this technique. I'm delighted to welcome our creative friend and creative sister, Candace Jedrowitz. Thanks, Tiffany. It's always a pleasure to be here. Welcome back to my studio, everyone. Today I'm working on a ceramic heart that has a texture stamped into it and I'm going to color it with crayons. Yeah, that's right, crayons. And then there's going to be some painting and then there's going to be some colored pencils. Wait till you see. It's going to be cool. This is a fun project that you can do with your kids as well as making yourself some jewelry. These are low fire ceramic, so they're earthenware hearts that I cut out and I stamped shapes in them. And the idea is to color all of the sticky uppy areas and leave the recessed areas for paint. 
you don't have to get full coverage. As a matter of fact, it's more dramatic if you don't have full coverage because the paint really makes a difference. And I put together some colors that I like. I love turquoise and red together. That's what I'm doing here. And then I've got kind of a violet and lime green with a little bit of pink in it and pink and orange. And even though you can't really tell the color difference here, wait till it's painted. It's going to be gorgeous. You don't have to paint the outer edges if you don't want to. I mean, color them. And I will have some of these hearts available in the Cool to Craft Marketplace if you're interested in trying them. Okay, I think we're ready for paint. Paint is a little bit of a mess, so be careful to have something covering your surface. And what paintbrush do I want to use? I think I want to use this one. I'm using a full strength acrylic brown. And I'm going to paint into all of the recesses. So basically I'm covering all of it because I want to be able to wipe off the top layer which resists the paint because it's crayon. That's why this is called wax resist. Now I'm going to take a wet sponge that's more damp than wet, really. You don't want it to wipe, wipe off everything. Too much water is going to water down your brown paint. And you don't want that. So you could even use a paper towel. And I'll, I'll show you how that looks in a second. You should not leave the paint on to dry. You should go back to wipe it off right away. You can just kind of sandwich this in here. And wipe it off. Isn't that lovely? Oh, I just love those colors together. And one more. This is a really cool finish for any kind of ceramics. And the benefit is it doesn't have to be fired. It's not a glaze. But you can do some really awesome looking things with it. Now those will dry, and then they're going to go into the oven at, uh, let's see, 350. But go ahead and put them on aluminum foil in your oven before you turn it on. And then set it for 350, and set your timer for 20 minutes. And that's enough to completely dry the paint out and burn off the wax, because there's more fun to come. Here you can see I've taken things a little further. I used colored pencils to punch up the color on the hearts after I melted the wax off. And now I'm going to show you how I did that on this one, and then I'll show you how I wire it. The surface on both of these is a clear glossy sealer. So with this one I have the red, and the colored pencil just... I, I like to do it on its side. I don't want to get da any down inside of the grooves. I want those to stay the dark brown. But I can punch it up by just darkening it around the edges. Let's try a little of the turquoise. And you can brighten that up. Oh, that's lovely. 
and take it out onto some of the edges. And you can also do some things to the back. Um, here I've stamped the word create. And I just love the way that looks. But you can draw on the back. You can leave it smooth if you want. Whatever it is your desire to have. All right, so that will just get some clear sealer on both sides, and let me show you how I finish the pendant. I've already made a lovely little dangle for it with a flower bead, and this will go on top. To attach the dangle, I'm gonna use mm, maybe three fingers of wire, and this is a 20 gauge wire. Now I'm going to make a little Swirl on one end. Got it started. To make a smooth swirl, you can use a tool to hold the swirl as you turn the wire. Maybe one more. Okay, now I'm gonna go through the front And I'm going to maybe take it right there and flatten that wire out like that. For the top of the pendant, I'm going to cut about that much wire. And I'm going to take just a little less than half of it to wrap around this pen cap. And I want that to be tight, so I'm going to squish it down like that. Fold it right over that edge. Now I'm going to bring it around the back. And as I do, I'm crossing it over. Like that. And now I'm going to wrap it around. So I'm going to slide that off. Cut the excess wire off. And that's the front of the pendant. So I'm going to, oh, I want this little barrel bead on there little. <laughs> it's not very little. And I'm going to slide through the front, keeping in mind where the front of the pendant is. Oh, that wire's still sticking out. I better get that a little more. Okay, that's a little better. Okay, I have my barrel bead on. I'm gonna go front to back with the wire. I think I am. <laughs> There's the hole. Okay, this is how I'm gonna position Dependent, but I need to turn it around because the crossed part is showing and I don't want that. That's how it's going to look like that. Now I'm going to bring the tail of the wire up and wrap it around. I'm going to wrap it around one more time and cut the excess off. And I will tuck that 
little wire in, and there you have a heart pendant. So cute. I just love how easy the wax resistant ceramic is. But more than that, I love the finish, the layering of the colors of the crayons and then the paint and then the colored pencil. It's a rich, exquisite finish. I hope you enjoyed the project. I hope that you're inspired to try Wax Resist and that if you do, I get to see it. You can always email me, Candice at cooltocraft.com with a photo and a story about what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it. I want to know everything. Thanks for watching. Thanks for having me, Tiffany. Back to you. So have you tried that technique with the crayons? I have not. I, I'm just in awe. It's such a cool technique. It's like, now my brain is just going tick, 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 tick. What can I do? Because you have a kiln, so mm -hmm. you can actually make so, your own. So she, well, if I can fire, but she right. actually, she did put the, the thing just in the oven. Right, right. but she, she sells those hearts, the right. earthenware hearts, and so that everyone, you and I mm -hmm. need to order some, so that we can try it. So anyone right. then can put the crayon on, antique those pieces, and then you pop them in the oven and you bake right. them for 20 minutes. Right. But if I wanted to make some other shapes, I have the kiln that I could make some other, right. other shapes okay. with clay. That is so great. <laughs> and again, isn't it fun that today's paint show is all about using paint in different ways? Of course, antiquing with paint has mm -hmm. been used forever. Do you but remember when we used to antique those plaster things? That, like, oh I mean, my 35, gosh. 40 years ago, we <laughs> used to paint those plaster things and antique them. We painted <laughs> thousands of plaster designs for boutiques, craft mm -hmm. boutiques, when they were really, really popular. I got so tired of painting those. But what's so cool is when you antique them, then it hides All any the of the mistakes <laughs> in painting. So we painted them first and we looked and we went, uh, I think they need antiquing. And so that way you could paint them a lot faster. Right. And oh, oh gosh, you I forgot. forgot. That, didn't you? <laughs> I forgot. We've done so many things over the years that I I've forgotten a lot more about. So I guess that one's vintage too. <laughs> Everything's vintage. <laughs> so talking about vintage, I have a project that I want to share with you that is vintage inspired flowers. And these are created from ribbons and you just start with plain white ribbon and you dip this into acrylic paint. And I actually, I have thought about this technique for years and years and years and had wanted to try it. I don't know why I never did, but recently I Left to Create had a live show mm -hmm. and they sent me a sampling of their paints and I love their fabric paint because it's very, very soft. Yeah, that's really cool because <laughs> you don't find that with acrylic paints. You can't get that out right, of Right, you definitely paint. notice a difference in this technique if you're using the soft fabric paint versus an acrylic paint. The acrylic paint makes your ribbons a lot stiffer. It still works, but I definitely love mm -hmm. the softer paint. This cool is colors. very cool. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like me to show you how this is These done? Do. Okay. Here are some of the materials that you will need to create your ribbon roses. I have white ribbon. And this, I believe, is some sort of poly blend. The bolts of ribbon that I pulled this from do not have any labeling on it, but it appears to be some sort of poly blend. And for this example, I am just using white ribbon. Of course, you need your scissors. In order to make your flowers, you'll need a corsage pin or a long quilting pin. I'm also using Lutrador for the backing for my flowers. A needle and thread, clothespin, and your paints. I also have some paper towels ready here. For your paints, I have found that I prefer to use a fabric paint like Tulip Soft Fabric Paint because when it dries on the ribbon it remains very very soft. You can use acrylic paints, they just dry a bit more stiff. I have poured my paints into the bottom of these little cups and I just add a splash of water and mix it around just a little bit. I'm going to use the end of my pen to mix. Really this depends on how dark you want your color as to how much water you add. And a lot of times I don't mix it all the way because I like the look 
of that paint when it's not fully mixed. So grab yourself a craft stick and stir up your paints a little bit better than I have. I take my white ribbon and I start to roll it. And what you want to do is keep those edges even on both sides because when you dip it into your paint that gives you better coverage on your paint into your ribbon. But again, if it's not exactly even, not a problem. Take your clothespin and just hold it. I like to have a clean container, this one's clean except for some paint that's dry on it, ready to put my ribbon into once that I've dipped it into my color baths and that's how I leave it to set a while before I open it up to hang it to dry. So this is all you need to do. This is so cool. You just dip it in and if you notice the ribbon just soaks up that color. It, did you see how fast that I dipped it into that paint? If you want to you can come back and hold it a little bit longer and it's going to soak up more of that paint. See that? Isn't that cool? And again where the paint is a little bit thicker because I've dipped it right into the paint at the bottom of this container you can dab off some of that excess so it doesn't dry too stiff. You can then take and dip the other side of your ribbon if you want it two-toned. So I'm just adding some color along the edges. Isn't that cool? That is how easy this is to do. As I mentioned, I just pop that right into the container. At this point, you can take off your clothespin and just leave it set there for a little while. Once this is set for a while, then I would open it up and just loop it over a hanger and hang it out to dry. What's nice too is if you do one color and leave part of the ribbon its original color. In this case, of course, it will be white and that gives you a nice effect. What I want to do on this is actually add a little bit more water because I want this to be a little bit more subtle. Dip it quick, just on the edge, and watch that color soak into the ribbon. And that's all you need to do. What was that? One second of dipping it into that paint. Dab off the excess, and again, just put this into a container that, <laughs> this isn't clean, but it has dry paint in it, and just let it set in there to dry. Once your ribbons have dried completely, then you can start creating your vintage inspired ribbon roses or flowers. There are many great books on the art of crafting with ribbon. So check out your local craft store, go online, and find books that have patterns to give you ideas of how you would like to create with your ribbon. These I happened to pick up at a local consignment store. It was a crafting score. I was so excited to get these two books, The Artful Ribbon by Candace Kling and A Passion for Ribbonry by Kamela Nitschke. And these have given me lots of great ideas. Another design that's actually in one of these books that I had seen before is called A Hat Pin Rose. And this is an example of what it looks like, and I want to show you really quickly how this is made. I'm using Luterdor for the back of my rose. I notice in the pattern books it talks about crinoline, but I have some Luterdor, which is a non-woven crafting fabric that's used for all sorts of mixed media, and it's really perfect for this particular technique. This is a much wider ribbon than I just showed you how to dye and color that I have used a very, very light shade of my lime green along with a light lavender. And you would fold this in half, and I'm going to fold it in half once more, and use my corsage pin and press it through to hold the center. The history behind the hat pin rose is that when women did not have much money to spend on ribbons, what they would do is reuse them. Instead of stitching them in place, they would actually just create their roses like this 
and then take the hat pin out at the end of the day and be able to reuse the ribbon. So I've folded that in half and in half again and what you do is you simply start you want it tight in the center so I am rolling this pretty tight as I go and you just start wrapping it around that pin. In my example you could see if this is the size pin that you were using if you were creating this just as a hat pin rose you'd have to stop here pretty quickly because it's going to stop catching each of the rounds but on my finished example what I did is each time I came around I stitched it to hold it in place. Look at the colors on that. Isn't that fabulous? To be able to custom color your own ribbons. So you would just keep bringing that around. So what I want to show you is one of the narrower ribbons, how you use the same technique. So here is one of the ribbons that I've colored with the same turquoise and lime green that I just showed you how to use. You're going to tuck that in and again the very center you want it to twist and roll and then just tuck it. And this is where it would come in and you'd want to stitch. So you come from the back, use your needle and thread and you start stitching this. I think everyone knows how to stitch, so I don't need to show you how to do that. So this shows you the beauty of the splotchiness of the technique that you can get in coloring this type of ribbon with this technique of just dipping it in. And it looks beautiful when you have it variegated here. And also, if you want this more of an antique look, you could dip this into a tea dye bath after you've colored it which would give it more of that faded, aged look. So depending on how intense you want your colors for your finished example would be if you want to put it into that tea bath or not. So you can see on this ribbon, I need to unwind it here so I can keep winding. And as you get a little bit farther out, then you don't need to, to wrap it quite as tight. Again, if you're actually stitching this down, it's going to hold those rows in place, especially in this example where you're not turning it quite as tight right here. You're definitely going to need to stitch. But that gives you an idea of how cool these flowers look. So find yourself some really great ribbon design books and follow the patterns in there to create all sorts of looks. Another technique is you can create a bud by rolling some of your ribbons together, stitching them together. You could also wire these and get all sorts of different looks. These would be pretty with some green ribbons to create some leaves and these could be flowing down. And that is all there is to creating your own custom colored, custom dyed ribbons. So what do you think? I love that. You know we could use some of the uh, old Mama Aline uh, ribbon um, instructions that she had. I know, I have to go find those books, our vintage Aline's instruction books. So you can become addicted to this, I need to warn you. I have, I don't know how many spools you have, but I have lots of, of the bolts of the white ribbon and I keep looking at it going, okay, what color do I want to make this one? But I think you could do it to any of the colors, just, just intensify your colors. You could, actually. Mm -hmm. I have a great stash of ribbon back here also, so mm -hmm. I could if something is, say, lavender and I want to put yellow along the edge, mm -hmm. just, we'll try that next time. Yeah. I had so much fun with that and I'm so glad that I finally had the chance to do it. Very cool. So if you have just joined us for today's show, we're going to do a quick recap of what we shared on today's Cool to Craft. I did painted tissue paper that you can use on for collage, you can use it in scrapbooking, mixed media. It's a fun technique. You need to try it. 
Candice Jedrowitz created earthenware hearts. This is a cool technique where you use crayons as a resist and you antique the heart with acrylic paint. You bake them in the oven. The color from the crayon stays on the heart and the wax melts away. Pretty cool. I'm going to order some of the hearts on cooltocraft.com and I'm going to try that myself because I love that technique. And I shared how to dye or paint ribbons by dipping them into acrylic paint that you can use for all sorts of crafting, including vintage inspired flowers. Very pretty. I love all of the projects today. Who would have thought you could do all that with paint? I think we need to do another paint show pretty soon. Oh, I think so too. <laughs> I can think of another dozen ways that I can use acrylic paints in an unusual way. Right. I do want to invite all of our viewers to stop by our Facebook fan page. That's facebook.com slash cool to craft. And we invite you to leave a comment about today's show. We love to keep connected with you. So stop by and check us out facebook.com slash cool to craft and invite your friends because I'm sure that you want to share it with them too. Also, you do want to go to cool to craft.com because we have all of our archive videos and instructions and blogs. I even have Heidi blogging now. <laughs> <laughs> I've twisted her arm so that she's okay, blogged. It's, <laughs> it's really not that painful, is it? It's not that painful. It's just for me finding the time, but Yes, I'm doing it. I was doing it and then I, I just forget because I get into my creative mode and it's like, vlog, vlog. <laughs> I told her, just take a moment and go, oh, what can I photograph? What can I talk mm -hmm. about? It takes five minutes. So I think if maybe she got more comments from you on her blog, we may be able to get her to blog more often. And then you can see more what I'm doing. Too. <laughs> so we're so glad that you were blogging on Cool to Craft. Thank you. Check it out. <laughs> Great show, thanks so much Thank you. for your creative contributions always. And we want to remind you to get creative. Be inspired. Get be inspired. Well, you can be inspired too. Get creative, get inspired. And be cool. Be cool. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>